So we're talking about this thing called a normal distribution, and we realized we get this with continuous random variables, and we also understood that there's lots of normal distributions out there for every specific context you're talking about. So like heights, there'd be lots of different distributions of heights depending on your population. What we're doing here is translating any normal distribution into what's called the standard normal distribution. That's where we ended last time, right? The standard normal. What, what happens was every mean is mapped to zero, and every value one standard deviation away from the mean is mapped to one. Two standard deviations away is mapped to two. What let us do that was our z-score. I remember I showed you that example before for our test where we actually did that, right? With the mean and got mapped to zero. If you take the mean minus the mean, well, you get zero. If you take a unit that's one standard deviation away from the mean, you subtract the mean, you get the standard deviation. Divide that by the standard deviation, you get one. This takes everything and puts it into a standard normal distribution. Now, there's a few things we need to know about this. Firstly, of course, our mean is zero. Standard deviation is always one, no problem. But what's kind of nice is that someone has already done the work for us. Oh yeah, by the way, what's the area under this curve again? <coughs> one. One, yeah, you get one. That has to be it, right? Because we're, we're, we're associating area with probability. So if our probabilities have to all add up to one, and every probability has to be less than or equal to one, then the area underneath this curve has to also be equal to one. So area equals one. Since that's the case, someone's actually already done the work to figure out all the areas, all the probabilities for every one of these cases. As a matter of fact, that's in that pullout sheet that you guys have. It's the one that looks like this. What it says is positive and negative z-scores. Have you seen that one? It's on, the, it's on the back. You're like, what are these tables for? We've never used these. Hey, we get to use them now. The positive and negative z-scores are for the standard normal distribution. Notice how it says z-scores. How do we map normal distributions in the standard normal? That's with the z-score. So really, all we're going to have to do in this section is be able to find a z-score, be able to draw a really pretty picture, put the number on there, and find out whether we're going to shade to the left or right. I need you to know something about this table, though. This table, if you look at the very top, you got a curve very much like mine, right? It has a zero in the middle. If you guys have yours, pull it out. Then there's a z-score. That z-score is what we're going to be drawing up there and it's shaded to the left. What this means is that this table only gives you the areas to the left of a shade of a value. The area to the left of that value. Nigel, if you're with me on that. That's all it gives you. Your calculator will calculate this for you. I'll probably show you that next time. But for right now, let's do an example using this table to see if we can figure out our area or our probability. Are you ready for it? Yes. OK. Did you know that every thermometer is not completely accurate? If you think about that, I mean, no one ever thinks about that. Someone thinks that when you take your temperature, it's always perfect, right? Well, haven't you ever got like a bag of chips that seems like it has less chips or a little bit more chips? Or a soda that has more soda, you're like, I want that one, that one. That's good. But you always do that. Well, same thing happens with, with uh, thermometers. I said thermometers, right, the first time? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thermometers are a little bit off, not like a, a whole bunch, but a little, little teeny bit. And as one company wanted to, tr to determine uh, their, the probability of, of getting a reading that's less than a certain amount, you see, what they didn't want was that. A, uh, a thermometer gave too high of a reading because that would give like a false positive for a temperature, right? Because if, if you took a temperature like 108, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Actually, you'd already be dead. Uh, but like if your thermometer said you have a temperature of 108, you're like, but I feel fine. Your mom's like rushing you to the hospital or whatever, or you're rushing yourself to the hospital. Don't do that if you have a temperature of 108, by the way. Just get an ice bath. Um, I think that's the best thing you can do. But anyhow, they, they don't want to send out these thermometers that are, are way, way off, do they? Or probably not. They don't want to send them where they're, they're too low or they're too high because they're giving you a false reading. So what this company said, or what this company did, I'm sorry, was took a, a large, large sample, close enough to be a population for us. So this company tested thermometers.
what they found out was that the mean, the mean of these thermometers was zero. Why was it zero? Well, these particular thermometers are based on the freezing point of water, saying that if you stuck this in frozen water, or well, be nice, uh, that it's going to read zero for you, okay? And so what they did was they found out they averaged all the readings. So they stuck them all on the same ice, and they, they read their readings. And some of them were a little bit high, some were a little bit low, because the runners are not completely accurate. You understand that, right? But most of them, when they averaged them, they averaged all of them together, they read zero, like on average. So their mean was zero. And just to make things easier right now, their standard deviation was one. Also, one more important piece of information, the readings were normally distributed. Is that important for us? Is that an important piece of information? Or why is it an important piece of information? Why? What type of distribution are we working with? A what distribution? Normal distribution. Normal distribution. If it's not normal, does that work? No. No. If you don't have a normal, normally distributed data, this doesn't work because this is only for normally distributed data. So this had a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, and the readings were normally distributed. Here's what we want to find out. We're going to find the probability that a thermometer will have a reading of less than 1.58. Let me give you the idea for this and we'll call it a day, okay? Here's the idea. What we're going to do here is we're going to translate this score of, I'm sorry, this, this value, this data value of 1.58 degrees, we're going to translate that into a z-score. Now, that's going to be very easy because of these, this information is very easy to work with. In general, it's not that hard. You calculate it as very fast. We're going to translate this into a z-score. Ladies and gentlemen, why are we translating this into a z-score, do you think? What was that table based on that I just showed you? That's why we're going to translate z-score. It's based on z-scores, right? It's based on the standard normal distribution, which has z-scores on it. We're going to translate this value into a z-score. After we do that, we're going to draw a picture and we're going to shade one side of that line. What we're going to find out is an area under a curve. That's going to associate itself with probability, and will give us the probability of finding a thermometer with a uh, reading of less than 1.58 degrees. We're going to do that next time. Uh, I will see you on Friday. So we're talking about how to find the probability that we're going to randomly select one of these thermometers that has a reading of less than 1.58 degrees when dumped in ice water, which has a, a temperature of exactly zero degrees. And we're, we're figuring this out because maybe some guy in the thermometer business said, look, I don't want to be selling some thermometers that are reading too high than what they are. So if you plunge in ice water, it says more than what it should be. I want it to be pretty pretty accurate, within a couple degrees. So we're going to go ahead and see how you would find the probability of randomly selecting one of those thermometers and it has a reading of less than 1.58. Are you guys ready to do this? Yes. Good. Last time we talked that a normal distribution can be translated to a standard normal distribution by simply using the z-score. It maps the mean to zero, it maps a unit that's one standard deviation away from the mean to a value of one, and negative one standard deviations away to negative one. So it maps any normal distribution to a standard normal. And the reason why we want to do that, all of the computations that your calculator and that the table I told you about last time is based on is a standard normal distribution. You see, there are infinitely many normal distributions, but only one standard normal. It takes all those normal distributions and translate them to the same picture. Are you with me on that? That's why we have such a thing called a z-score. So in order to translate this problem, which is going to be pretty basic because of our, our situation here, into a standard normal distribution, we're going to use a z-score. 
So the first thing we're doing is somehow we've got to calculate this. The z-score, if you don't remember it, you're going to want to memorize this, is x minus the mean over the standard deviation, or x minus mu over sigma. Hey, again, uh, by the way, what does the, the mu stand for? Mean. That's a mean for a... That's not a sample. That would be x bar. This is a... And this is a... Good, standard deviation for a population as well. What is x? I'll bet you could tell me x in this case. I'll bet you could. But what's x in general? Oh, stump job. Stump job. What is x in this case? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's the value. So in this case, x is 1.58. If I said less than 2 degrees, x would be 2. If I said more than um, negative 3 degrees, x would be negative 3. Are you with me on that? x is the value that you're checking. In other words, it's the continuous random variable. It's the variable. It's what, what can change here. Your mean and your sigma, those aren't going to change. Those are set for your population. However, your, your x, that's the value that you're checking. In this case, it's 1.58. Remember, we're continuous because we're, we're typically dealing with measurements, and those have an infinite number of possible values. Remember the difference between discrete and continuous? Discrete was like rolling a die. You only get 1 through 6. Continuous was like a measurement. You get 1.58, you get 1.5823, you get 1.5810. You know, you get all sorts of different values in there, an infinite number of values. That's why we have a continuous situation here. That's why we're in Chapter 6, talking about continuous random variables, and that's what X stands for. Do you understand that? So when I ask you what X stands for, you're going to tell me that X stands for the value of what? <coughs> wow, that didn't sink in, did it? I don't <laughs> better know it. We just talked about it. Figure it out. Okay, so in our case, x is how much? Yeah, good. It's the value we're talking about. Better watch that video again if you didn't catch on what we were talking about. Uh, what's our mean in this case? So we're going to subtract zero. And we're going to divide, what's our standard deviation here? One. Okay, so you're pretty good at finding the formulas out. You just don't know what any of these values mean, right? <laughs> you, know the, you know what the mean is. You know what the standard deviation is. We've been doing that for a while. X is your continuous random variable. Just like X was your discrete random variable last chapter. It's the variable. X is a variable, right? It's the only thing up here that's even possibly changing. So the only thing that can be changing, you call that a variable. In this case, we're talking about continuous variables. That's why that's a continuous random variable. So what is x? There we go. There we go. Continuous random variable. Hey, can we figure out the z-score for that? Yeah, this situation is going to be pretty easy. What's the 1.58 minus 0? And then we divide by 1, we get how much? This is the most basic example we have. Because with this thermometer situation, it's already a picture of a standard normal distribution, so it's not changing anything. But I want to go through the process here to show you that this is what you would do in, in any case. If you had a mean that was different than zero and a standard deviation that was different from one, you would still find the z-score here. The reason why that z-score doesn't change for us is because we know standard normal distributions all have, are supposed to have a mean of zero and are supposed to have a standard deviation of one. If they don't, the z-score works for us to change that value. If they do, the z-score confirms that this is a standard normal distribution. And in this case, the value is the z-score itself. Did, you, did that make sense to you? Did you follow that? So this is a very special case. Most of the